Somewhere along the spine of the house, there's a furnace. This was before the war. It's where the children used to play. The room was scraped raw. They kept the things that needed to be kept because one day they thought they might use them again. Maybe that's why she played down here so often, because she wanted to be kept and used. She felt she was of no use. To and from school, day after day, breakfast and dinner, there were days when she felt her tongue slipping away. She would open her mouth to breathe or to eat, but there were no words. She heard foreign words. They were the words of her father. He remarked on the news of to her mother, but her mother would never reply. Her mother's words were always to her, reminders, rules to follow, actions to honor, people to avoid. But in the cellar, staring into the mouth of the furnace, she could see different words. The hot coal spoke to her in their secret language. They wanted to seduce her. They would recommend horrible crimes, destruction, murder. They wanted her to kill the curls in her hair, to paint her nails red, to find the places in the world where people would listen to her. But the furnace warned her that they wouldn't want to hear her speak with words. She should save the words for the fire. She would need to speak to the strangers with the settling of her arms and the crossing of her legs and the adjustments she would make to her tight dress. A dress that would be a furnace. It would keep her warm and heat the people around her. She would wear it like it was fuel, red hot fuel. The voices in her head would finally be translated. The language would be something that could wrap her mind in the comfort of a shawl or a blanket from the bed of a stranger. And even if he spoke to her in his new language, she wouldn't have to answer him. She could eat whatever she ordered from room service, a room service that would come up as many times as she wanted. Then she would ask him to open the window, because it was too goddamn hot in this tiny flea bag hotel room.